Father, thank you for your presence in this place. God, I always love to hear the just the, the conversations all across this room. I love the, the fellowship that takes place here. And Father, it, it happens really because you are our common denominator. Uh, we are brothers in arms, brothers in Christ here. And Father, if there is anyone here today who is not a part of your family, that God, I pray that soon and And very, very soon, Lord, you would, uh, you would draw that, that man to you. Father, he would fully surrender his life and heart to you and then really understand what it's like to be in fellowship. So thank you, Lord, for the sweet, sweet fellowship we experience here every week. Lord, right now, over these next few minutes, I pray that we might just be able to put our, our calendars and agendas aside and just focus, Lord on what you have for us today. And we thank you in advance, God, for what you're going to do, because we believe, we trust, we are confident in you today. Thank you for this word that you've given to Rod. Now just use him as your messenger to bring good news to us. And Father, may we make application today and walk out of here looking more like Jesus than we did when we walked in. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's men said, amen. amen. I remember when I, was, when I was raising my kids, I used to say, God gave you a mind, and here's your fill, and you got to use your thinker. you gotta, you got to use your thinker. And then, of course, one of my favorite all-time Dan Erickson Danisms, one of my favorite ones, he always said, stinking living leads to stinking, I mean, stinking thinking leads to stinking living. And isn't that the truth? So today, guys, what I want to do is I want to talk about the mind. The mind, guys, is a battlefield. I mean, it's a, there's a war raging here. And no matter how much you try to control your mind, you're going to be in the midst of a battle. Because get this, with the mind, it's 24-7. It never turns off. Whether you're conscious or unconscious, whether you're at sleep, whatever, your mind is always working, always working. You're generating thought after thought after thought. And you think about it, guys. There's times that you have uh, great thoughts of faith. And within seconds, you've got great thoughts of fear. I mean, it can happen so quickly, so rapidly, because they're opposing each other. Your mind is saying, I want to trust God. I believe in God. And then the next second, you're going, man, I want to be in control of my life. I want to be in charge of my life. Uh, there's moments you're living in chaos, and other times you're calm and at rest. That's the mind. It's working. It's actively working. And I've discovered this. I wrote this in your notes, that most of the bat life battles are won or lost in your mind. In fact, before the result is ever, the full result is ever known, your mind has already made up a decision. Is this going to work or not work? I got some good news for you today. God's word is powerful to not only help you, but conform and transform your mind. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, Greg has already mentioned in the announcement, show me the father. I'm you guys know I'm a huge fan of this movie, huge fan. And, and, and again, reminder, Monday, February 28th, 5.30 Chick-fil-A, 6 o'clock movie, 7.30 Damian Cooper. And uh, if you've already seen it, come again. John, how many times have you seen it now? Four, five, six times? Yeah. You'll probably be there again, won't you? Yeah, yeah he will be because he, he loves it. I love it. It's a fantastic movie. Bring your sons, bring your dad, bring your granddad, bring your buddies. Uh, it'll be well worth it. Now, the reason I bring that up is some of you know, one of the stars of that movie is Sherman Smith. Uh, Sherman, back in my Seattle days, we had a spiritual connection. I was involved with Fellowship of Christian Athletes with him, Pro Athletes Outreach with him, and also the Seattle Seahawks Bible study, which he is a part of. Um, and the movie has reconnected us in a very, very special way. Well, on February 10th, I was on a Zoom, a two-hour Zoom call with about 30 guys. In fact, 10 of those guys were some of our Lee Summit uh, men and some of our North Kansas City men jumped on this Zoom call, and we spent two hours with Sherman. And we're talking about the movie. We're talking about the fact that the Minnesota Vikings entire football team has seen this movie together because Kirk Cousins pulled it off. We talked in that call, hey, let's get Sherman to come to Kansas City, show it to the Kansas City Chiefs, 
And we agree that if that happens, he's going to come here to TJW and make that all happen. It's going to be some really cool things are happening behind the scenes, guys. And as part of that, uh, I got permission and that, that Zoom call, and Chris, I forget, it ended up being about, I think, about an hour and a half that is the recorded piece, is on our YouTube channel now. So I put the YouTube channel there at the top of our notes. If you want to see the conversation that Sherman had and some of the things we talked about, it's on our channel. Now, the reason I bring that up is part of this talk today is based on what, how Sherman began his comments. He began his comments by saying, you got to get your mind right. You see, my lifetime one word, we talk about, we've talked about an annual one word, but my lifetime one word, you guys know, is the word accountability. That is my lifetime word. Well, get this, Sherman's lifetime word is the word identity. And this is the verse that he referenced when he was talking about this. He said from Romans 8, 5, and 6, for, for those who are in accord with the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. And those who are in accord with the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Men, I put this in your notes. You cannot afford to be haphazard when it comes to your mind. Here's your fill-in. You have to be intentional in order to get your mind right, and you have to set your mind right. Because we know this from this verse, the flesh only seeks to satisfy the flesh, and the spirit only seeks to satisfy the spirit. So in addition to being intentional, setting your mind, you also have to be, here's your next fill in, you have to be very specific, very specific. Vagueness, indecisiveness, being sloppy, being casual, letting your mind drift, guys, is a recipe for disaster when it comes to your mind. It puts you in a very, very precarious situation. Remember, the enemy has a three-part strategy to take you out. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that is what he's trying to do. And guess what? He's trying to get in your head. He's trying to get in your head. He's trying to deceive you. He's, 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 per, he's perpetuating lies. In fact, the scripture says that he's, he's, he's been a liar from the beginning. And he's trying, to, he's trying to do damage on you. And one of the ways you can get, that you get very specific, one of the ways you get very specific, guys, is being a person who's committed to the truth. And the way that you get to the truth is going to directly to the person who identifies himself as the truth. And that person is Jesus. John 14, 6, he clearly says this. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And he lays this out. I'm the truth. You want to know the truth, you got to get to know me because I'm the one that's going to tell you who you are. So you got to be intentional, you got to be specific, and you have to do it. Here's your next fill in do it continually. You got to do it continually over and over and over again. This is not a one and done thing with your mind. You got to continually do it. And, and Paul references this in Romans 12, chapter 2. Here's what he says, do not, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And what Paul's talking about there, guy, is renewing your mind. Now think about it. Paul was the ultimate thought warrior. In fact, in Romans chapter 7, you get inside of Paul's mind and he reveals something that most of us would never admit at least publicly. We would never admit what Paul's about to admit. Here's what he says in the last 11 verses of Romans chapter 7. I won't read it to you, but we'll, we'll reference it back here in a few minutes. But, but, but he's telling you this, what I want to do, I can't do. I want to make wise decisions, I'm making foolish decisions. I want to do the right thing, I do the wrong thing. I want to do good, but I'm doing evil. And he's got, this, he's got this mind battle going on that's literally, literally paralyzing him. He's like a yo-yo when it comes to controlling his mind. And guys, think about it. You, we all have been exactly where Paul's been. We may not admit it, but, but we think it. Here's some of the things that, the lies and the things that we begin to think. We say, well, I don't know if I can trust God. I don't know if God can be trusted. I don't know if God cares about me. The, the lie is you can't succeed. You'll never amount to anything. 
You don't have what it takes. I'm sorry, I just turned this off. You don't have what it takes. You're a quitter. People don't like you. Those are some of the lies that are perpetuated that are going through, our, running through our mind, running through our mind. And guess what? It's nonstop chatter. I mean, it's voices. It's all this stuff that's going on. And if you do not renew your mind, guess what? You're going to start believing the lies. One of the things that Sherman talked about in the Zoom call is he constantly heard, heard stuff going on in his head in his growing up years. But there were three specific people in his life, three specific people who God used to give him messages to help him run from wrong thinking and run into what he called right thinking. The first person was his dad. Here was the message his dad for him. His dad says, don't buy the lie. Sherman, don't buy the lie. And what he was referencing was this, Sherman, you can be anything God wants you to be. You don't have to buy the lie that you got to live in Youngstown, Ohio your whole life. You don't have to buy the lie that uh, you're going to work in the steel mill like me the rest of your life. You don't have to buy the lie that you're going to live in low-income housing on the, on the other side of the tracks. You don't, son, don't buy the lie. The second person that came in his life with a message was his mom. Her message was, don't be the one. And what she was talking about, when you go to college, guess what? You're going to be a rarity. You're going to be an odd bird. You're going to, there's very, very few black people on that campus. And they're going to expect you showing up and you're going to be unmotivated, uneducated, and all you're there to do is play football. She said, don't be the one. And guess what? He excelled in college. He excelled on the football field. God gave him a platform, gave him input. He wasn't going to be the one. And then his third person that spoke life into him was a guy named Ken Hutcherson. Ken was a linebacker for the Seattle Seahawks, uh, later became a pastor, went by the name Hutch. Some of you might remember before he passed away years ago, he was one of Rush Limbaugh's go-to guys on his show. He used him all the time. But Hutch would say this to, to, uh, to Sherman after he became a believer, these words, don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. And what he was referencing here was Sherman, you know, when you become a new man in Christ, you got to act differently. You got to act differently. Don't, don't be the fool. In fact, uh, in fact, here, here's how it kind of it kind of shaped out. He says, Sherman, you are a new man in Christ. And he'd say, Sherman, don't you know who you are? Don't forget your brand new man in Christ. And the verse he referenced here, guys, was 2 Corinthians 5:17 which says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, this person is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. You see, guys, when you become a new man in Christ, and here's your fill-in, he changes your identity. He changes your identity, and everything about us going forward should be brand spanking new. So, gentlemen, here's what happens when that new man emerges, we have a new mindset, we have new power, we have new freedom, we have new purpose, we have new efforts, we have new wants, new desires, new hopes, new goals, new perspective, new preferences, new schedule, new actions, new reactions, new habits, new friends, new patterns, new ways. Guess what? That new man has a brand new playbook. Everything is new every moment, every day, day after day. And, you, and, you're, and you're living in this newness that God is doing in your life until you see Jesus face to face. And that's what Hutch was telling him. You are a new man in Christ. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool anymore. In fact, when he was, one day he said to him, and I love, I love how, how, this, how he said it on the Zoom call. You'll hear it if you, if you listen to yourself. He says, if they can't see it, don't say it. And what he's talking about there, he's talking about his faith. He's saying, Sherman, if you're going to live like a thug, don't people, tell people you're a believer. In fact, he would say this. Here's your fill-in. Don't just be saved, live saved. Don't just be saved, live saved. Sherman was saved, but he was still acting like a fool. Guys, are you, are you living saved? Are you living saved? Back to the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. It's in your notes. Another mind verse here. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage battle according to the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We're destroying arguments and all arrogance raised against the knowledge of God, and they are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Hey, Chris, I'm getting some feedback back here. Are you guys getting that as well? Hey, Chris, Chris, can you get the feedback taken care of? Okay. Guys, the word, the word power, the word power in this verse is the Greek word dunamis, which we get our word dynamite from. It's coming out of here, Chris. We got feedback. I don't know where you want me to stand somewhere else. Maybe come from the city. Maybe come from the city. No, it's just, it's just, it's, it's really bouncing back at me. Let me see your, uh... there you go. I still hear it. You hear it too? I can't hear it. Okay. All right. We'll see. Thank you. The all-knowing Chris came through again there. All right. All right. So we get the word dynamite from this. And literally, guys, the mind, which is being led now by the Spirit of God, can demolish strongholds. It can literally blow blow it all up. The devil wants to attack your mind. He's wanting to reshape your thinking one lie at a time. And guys, he is nonstop in this. It's, it's, It's assaults. It's grenades. It's heavy artillery. It's weapons of mass destruction. That's exactly what he's trying to do. Anything to get to your mind. But here's the truth, and I wrote this in your notes because it's a little bit technical here, a little bit above my pay grade, but here we go, guys. We can take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Change your thinking, get this, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. We are called to renew our minds. Did you know that our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts? What we think shapes who we are. And guys, I'm not exaggerating on this. Here, here we go. Think, think about this. Modern science and the Bible agree on this point. In recent years, modern psychology has developed something called cognitive behavioral therapy. This breakthrough teaching therapy reveals that many problems from eating disorders to relational challenges, addictions, forms of depression, anxiety are rooted in faulty and negative patterns of thinking. Our cognitive behaviors are shaped by the challenges and anxieties that are running through our minds. So here you go. Listen to this. Treating these problems begin with changing our thinking. What science is telling us today is what God told us 3,000 years ago through Solomon, and this is noted in Proverbs 23, 7. And here's what it says, guys. For as a man thinks within himself, so he is. This is, this is, this is medical science and the scriptures colliding here, guys. The scriptures is validating what medical science has discovered. And here's what the, here's what the science says. If you think you can't, then you probably won't. If you think you can, you probably will. If you think you're a victim, guess what? You'll become a victim. If you think you can overcome, you'll overcome. That's what they're telling us here. And this is exactly what Paul's talking about as well from God's word. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Here's where it reads. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, let your mind Let your mind dwell on these things, the things which you've learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, I want to tell you, sneak peek, spoiler alert, I'm going to unpack that entire verse, all eight of those things, in one of these later sessions that we're going to do on this whole concept of identity. We're We're going to get there and go through that. But I want to take just a second to show you something from Philippians chapter 4, that also applies all throughout Scripture. And here's the three thoughts that Paul's capturing related to the thoughts. He's first of all said, you got to take a thought, and then you turn it into an action, and then it becomes an experience. So actions you're filling here, guys. Here's the progression in this verse, and you see it clearly with the verse there. The thought is when he says, let your mind dwell on these things. One of the translations says, think about such things. So you're, you're engaging your thoughts. And then it says you move to action. The action in this verse is when he says, practice these things. 
Practice these things. That's the action part. And then the result is this experience when he says the God of peace will be with you. Paul's telling us here that our thoughts shape our life. Let me use an Old Testament example to show you this. We see this in the story of Daniel. This is another story we're going to get into later in the year. Daniel, his identity is being assaulted. I mean, he is full of salt. In fact, his, his identity is being assaulted so greatly, get this, so greatly. Brand new name. You're, gonna now, now, you're not Daniel anymore. You're Belshazzar. Belshazzar means Bell's prince. He's literally going to be under the authority of this new king. He's going to change his identity. But Daniel has clear thinking. He has clear thinking. And in verse 8, here's what he says. It says, but Daniel made up his mind. He made up his mind that he wasn't going to defile himself. Yesterday, one of the guys in the Zoom call said something I thought was great. Don Vermel said this. Remember, remember Daniel grew up in the land of Judah. You know, he, it was the land of Judah. And here's the comment Don made. You, you could get Daniel out of Judah, but you couldn't get Judah out of Daniel. Isn't that good? <laughs> the Lord was in his life. Yeah, you could change everything about him, but guess what? The Lord was still in his life. And that's who he was going to take him. It all became because he was thinking. He had the thought. He made it into an action. And it became an experience. An experience that changed not only his life, but guess what? Those three buddies that he surrounded himself with as well. So your thoughts lead to an action, lead to an experience. We see that here. So here's my point. Back to the notes. So if the Bible and modern science are both teaching our lives, moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts, shouldn't we ask ourselves this question, do I like the direction my thoughts are taking me? Now, you might be skeptical about that statement, and if so, I get it. I understand that. I understand that because, get this, most of us have tried self-help techniques to change our mind. Well, I'm just going to do better. I'm just going to be strong. I'm just going to pull this off. I'm going I'm I'm to get my, my mind's going to, I'm, 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 and get this, that's not going to work, guys. Today, I want to give you something and show you there's someone who wants to be your advocate, who someone wants to be your shield, wants to be your sword, wants to help you with this battle of the mind. So here in the notes, I say this, with God's help, with God's help, you can transform your mind. You can stop believing the lies which are holding you back. You can end the vicious cycle of thoughts which are destructive to you and others. And you can allow God to renew your mind by saturating you with his unchanging truth. Guys, back in my early days living in Seattle, some of you know that I worked for a big eight accounting firm. I was an auditor. I went to, uh, to companies and I did audits. I was part of the audit staff of a, one of the, of the big eight firms. And I traveled all the way to the Pacific Northwest doing audits. The word audit simply means this. It means a comprehensive examination, uh, inspection of some sorts. So this morning, I want to challenge you to do what I'm going to call a thought audit. A thought audit. I'm going to give you three different statements, six different words, uh, one word on one side of the page, one word or the other, and I want you to do an audit for yourself. And here's the question I want you to ask. Which way do, am I drifting towards? Today I'm going to get a number, but I want you to think about where, where am I headed? So the first thought audit is, thought number one is worried on the left side and peaceful on the right side. Worried on the left, peaceful on the, on the right. Guys, do you tend to worry? Do you tend to get panicked? Are you anxious, fretful, drama, high emotions? Or, you, or do you tend to be peaceful with a calm and restful spirit, especially when you're facing a potentially stressful situation? Which number on that scale represents where you're at today? Circle that number. Here's the second one. Thought number two is negative on the left and positive on the right. Do you see the, the glass half empty or half full? With negativity, you can see the bad, the bad, the bad, the bad, the imperfect, the flaws, the issues that could blow it up. Or do you, do you tend to be positive and, and, and optimistic? And yes, you know there's risk involved, but guess what? You're ready for the challenges. You see the upside. You see the opportunities. Circle the number negative, positive on that thing. 
The thought number three is worldly on the left and eternal on the right. On the worldly side, you're looking at the immediate situation you're facing. You leave God on the shelf. You leave God out of the equation. Uh, You look at the temporary. You look for the world to solve your problems. And your eyes are focused on what you can see. The eternal, you see the unseen. You see the unseen. You know there's a, there's a big old prize on the other side, and that's what you're looking at. You're not work, looking at, at the world's solutions. The eternal knows with God nothing is impossible. Now, guys, take a step back, and I hope you got three numbers circled on this thing. Remember, what you think about is eventually what will come out in your life. Your life is always moving in the direction of your most strongest and dominant thoughts. And so ask yourself this question, am I excited about the direction of my thoughts? Am I excited where I'm at? The inner dialogue will will determine the direction that that current number will take. And I want to tell you something, guys. If you're at a four on one of those, guess what? There's something called the drift that will take place. And I'm going to suggest today that in the natural, guess what? You will, as much as you want to go to the right side, the drift will always go towards the left. Because guess what? Drifting always does its best work when it's going downhill, right? It's hard to go upstream. It's hard to go upstream. If you're at a seven, guess what? Eventually you're going to end up at a one, two. Because you're going to drift. Because here's the reality, guys, whatever you're manufacturing of your own volition, your own thoughts, guess what? That's all you got in your tank is what the number you put down. The only way you're going to drift the other way, <laughs> and I'm and I'm, I'm suggesting you don't drift that way, you are swimming upstream that way. You are, you're, you're going to have to work it, and guess what? You're going to need more than you got. You're going to need what I call the Spirit of God in you. Let me, give you, let me give you the illustration from Romans chapter 7. I know we didn't read this passage. I hope you'll read it on your own. But guess what? Paul admits in Romans 7, and I did, I did it for myself. You may want to do it for yourself as well. I begin to circle how many times did Paul use the word I, me, or my in those last 11 verses of Romans chapter 7. And I counted them up 36 times. 36 times, it's I, me, or my. And man, you can see he is fighting for his life. He is struggling. He is, he is trying to change it on his own. And guess what? It's not working. He's failing miserably. And then he takes a turn in Romans chapter 8. He starts off by saying this. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And guess what, guys? The next 17 verses of Romans chapter 8, The word I, me, and my is never used, but there's a new word he introduces, and this word happens 20 times. It's the word spirit. Guess what? It's no longer Paul. It's the spirit of God in him. And now it's all changed. God is helping him. He he, he, He was limited, guys, on what he could do. He now invited God to do it. So guys, I want to give you a strategy to help you renew your mind. And today we're going to just attack one thing. One thing. Here's here's the big thought. Identify the biggest stronghold or the biggest lie that's holding you back. What is it, guys? What is that one area? That one area. Perhaps it's a lifelong fear. Maybe it could be peer pressure. Maybe it's a physical limitation like your weight or something from your background or history. Maybe it's a sin, an addiction. Uh, And by the way, every thought you have is creating a neurological thought. Guess what, guys? Uh, It's creating a pathway. It's creating a pathway. And those, those neurological thoughts are either positive or negative. If it's positive, guess what? You're building energy. You're building momentum. You're building, you know, truth in your life. If it's, if it's negative stuff, guess what? You're also building what I'll call a rut. And guess what? You'll get stuck in the rut. You'll, it'll literally paralyze you. It'll, 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 it'll dominate your life. And so today we're going to attack one, one area, one thing. You might be saying to yourself, man, I don't know who I am and whose I am. That's an identity issue. You might be saying, um, uh, I'm not good enough. I don't have what, I have what it takes. I'm, I, I feel helpless. I feel worthless. 
I want you to write something. I don't have a feeling for it. I want you to write, what is that one area that literally is a stronghold in your life? And then secondly, I want you to do is name the truth which will demolish that stronghold. What truth are you going to claim today? And I've left you a blank there. What's the truth that you're going to claim? Jesus said this, that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so we, we're not going to base, guess what, our life on a lie anymore. Whatever the stronghold is, we're going to demolish that. We're going to take it captive. Whatever it is, the context here is we're going to attack this stronghold with a sword and a spear. And guess what? We know from the word of God that we have something that we can take that, guess what, is an aggressive piece. And it's what? The word of God. We can take the word of God at what this, and we can destroy and demolish whatever this thought is in our mind, this dominant lie. Guys, I'm going to confess to you something. Three months ago around Thanksgiving, I was struggling with some crazy thinking in my head. I mean, it was craziness. And rather than playing defensive, I decided to go on the offensive. I, I determined I was going to memorize three different passages of Scripture to help get my mind right. So here's the passages I memorized. Philippians 4, 4 to 9. I memorized Romans 12, 1 to 3. And I memorized 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. There's about 11, 12 verses that are packaged there within those three verses. And I, and I committed those verses to memory. In fact, you've already heard me reference all three of them in this talk today. And guess what? I did that when I was doing my daily push-ups, my planks, so I could be, be renewing my mind as I'm renewing my body. And guess what, guys? That crazy thinking that was going through my brain a few months ago is gone. I attacked it offensively. Let me also make a second confession to you. My stronghold for a long time has been perfectionism. I, I, I have somehow convinced myself that I got to I, I, I gotta do more, I got to do more, and I got to do it exactly right. And guess what, guys? I'm not perfect, and so guess what? Because I mess up, because I'm flawed, because I am imperfect, because I'm whatever, guess what? I have a lot, I have regrets, I have shame, and I have guilt that, that, that can run through my mind. And so what I do to make up for it, because, well, if I can't be perfect, at least I'll just do more. <laughs> I'll just, you know, create some more quantity. I'll create more production. Maybe God will like me more. Maybe I'll earn his favor more. Guess what, guys? That's, that's wrong thinking. That's stupid thinking. That's, that's not godly thinking. And so you got to have a strategy. What am I going to do when all this crazy stuff starts going through my mind? Second Peter 1 to 3 tells me that his divine power gives me the strength. It's his divine power. And so here's, here's the reality, guys. When I'm weak, God says, I'll give you the strength. When I'm unqualified, God says, I'll, Rod, I'll qualify you. Rod, when you feel inadequate, guess what? I will be your provision. When I'm fearful, God will God begin to say, God, Rod, I didn't, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. When I'm worried, he says, Rod, cast your anxieties on me. Cast your burdens on me. When I'm scared, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. You see how this works? Every single lie, every single area, God says, no, no, no. Are you going to believe who I am and what I say about who you are? So what's the lie that's driving you, holding you back? And when that lie comes, are you using the word of God to defeat the messaging? You're saying, he makes me strong. He, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Here's your last feeling, guys. Your life is moving in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. Capture the lies, rename it in truth, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jake Southern, one of our guys that uh, is at my church and one of the guys that was on our Zoom call yesterday, a few weeks ago, I got one, a couple of wristbands from him. And one of the wristbands I selected was from John chapter uh, 8. And it says this, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. So guys, I'm going to close this today by giving you a little sneak peek, what I'm going to be doing for the next, probably entire 2022. We're going to zero in, zero in on identity. And I'm going to introduce to you something from Craig Groeschel's book called Winning the War in Your Mind. Here's the four thoughts that I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to 
unpack for you coming up in the future. It's called the replacement principle, which is removing the lies, replacing with truth. The rewire principle, which is rewiring your brain, renewing your mind. The reframe principle, which is reframing your mind and restoring your perspective. And then the rejoice principle, which is rejoice Lord always. That's one of the things we're going to do. We're also going to introduce you to something, a little book called The 31 Truths. The 31 Truths, it's, it's based on, a, on some writings with a ministry called Thistle Bend Ministries, and it's Who I Am in Christ from Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. I have, I bought 30 of these, I'm down to 13 left. They're six bucks each if you're interested. If you want to get one for me today, you can, but I'm going to walk us through these 31 truths. And the cool thing about this, it's literally like a flash card. One, it gives you a daily thought, here's wrong thinking and here's right thinking. And every day it gives you a wrong thinking, right thing. Let me just give you a sample of a couple of these. Uh, again, our time is almost out here. Day two is based on Ephesians 1. Here's the wrong thinking. It all depends on me. Here's right thinking. The Lord views me as faithful because I am who Christ says I am. With his help, I can walk it out. How about this one from day 15? Wrong thinking, I must accomplish everything in my own strength. Right thinking, God's power is mighty and available to me in Christ. I can and should ask for him to do mighty things in my life. That's based on Ephesians 1, 9 to 21. Here's, here's one last one from day 17. Wrong thinking, God doesn't care. Right thinking, God's mercy is great. I mean, it just goes back and forth every day. What's, what's the wrong thinking? What's the right thing? It's all based on the word of God. So that's where we're going to head, guys. We're going to talk about these four principles. We're going to talk about these 31 truths. And uh, again, it might take us the entire year to get through this, but we're going to begin to believe what God says about us and not what the, what the lies are that, God, that the devil's saying about us. We're going to understand who our identity is, who we are and whose we are, who we are and whose we are. One final thought. It's in your notes here. It's back to show me the father. Sherman Smith gave a quote. It was a great quote, but Greg Griffin and I were talking about this and uh, afterwards, and it really points us to our identity as well, to our identity. And so here's the modified quote from Greg Griffin. When Jesus saves you, you're saved from the power of sin, the penalty of sin, and the permanence of sin, and one day you'll be saved from the presence of sin. And here's the point that Greg made, and I thought it was so, so good. He shared this quote because he knows the sin, the temptations, the issues can so easily entangle us, and they're present. They're present until we graduate from heaven. And then at that point, we'll never see it, feel it, tempted by it ever, ever again. But until then, we got to deal with it. We got we to gotta, we gotta deal with it. The power of sin, the penalty of sin, the permanent of sin will no longer have a grip on us. It once had, but it will still be present until we're in glory with him. Greg, thanks for that good word. That's a good, good, good word to end on today. Guys, that's where we're headed. That's what we're doing. If you're interested in this, we'll do that. I'm going to pray, and then I may make a quick announcement. I'm going to bring Craig White up. We're going to talk about this real quick, and then we're going to see you when, we, when we're done. Uh, we'll take care of the chairs. Thanks for coming, guys. To God be the glory. Lord, thank you for this morning. We thank you for the good, good um, uh, word that you gave us today from your word directly from you that uh, you uh, you are who you say you are and you are trying to tell us who we are in Christ who we are in Christ that old man has passed away and the new man has come and it's new thinking new living everything is brand new we put our trust in you and so Lord help us to believe that today and, to, and, and then you're our advocate you're the one that wants to walk with us Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen.